It says, why is, why is Greenland so rich these days? The reason for Greenland being so rich when the countries are going down, it pulled out of the EU. It said goodbye to the EU. It says, um, and it starts off with the fish stocks as an example of what the European Union has done uh, to fishing, as countries were self-supporting at one time. Britain used to have 80% of European fish stocks. It says, if you think that leaving the EU would be catastrophic, look at the Greenland. By rights, its people ought to be poor. Their island is isolated, suffers from freezing weather, has a workforce of only 20,000, and relies on fish for 82% of its exports. But it turns out that since leaving the EU, Greenland has been so freed of EU red tape and of the destruction of the common fisheries policy that the average income of the islanders today is higher than those living in Britain, Germany, and France. Well, no kidding. It didn't take a genius to figure that out before it all happened. Greenland's politicians realized that the fisheries policy was ruining their fishing industry when they were in the EU. They had to get the guts to stand up against all of the profits of doom and let their people vote in a referendum on leaving the European community, as the EU was then called. On January 1, 1985, it became independent of Brussels, the only country ever to do so. Greenland was, with Britain, one of only two EU countries to be heavily dependent on fishing, in fact, Britain had, in some estimates, 80% of Europe's fish stocks when it entered the EU because the fishermen had carefully managed them well. They, they managed the stocks. They didn't rape the seabed like these deep trawlers do, which the fishermen of Spain, France, and Italy had destroyed most of, of their Mediterranean stocks by deep trawling. They did the same in Canada. They're bringing Spanish ones off Canada quite a few years back, in fact, when they banned the East Coast for fishermen to fish in Canada. They brought them all in, uh, they let them come all in to, to Canadian waters and, and, and literally deep troll them and destroy the fish stocks of Canada. I put the, the Canadian ones out of business. Their own government put us out of business. The Canadian government put the fishermen of Canada out of business. It says here, surprising thing is that while the unemployment from closing uh, loss-making coal mines is frequently denounced by labour politicians, more British workers lost their jobs as a result of gigantic French and Spanish boats being permitted to raid our stocks. Few of those politicians seem to care, but care they should because it's not just fish where the EU is damaging us, but in financial services, manufacturing. Indeed, its ever-increasing regulations impose unnecessary costs across the whole of our economy. Greenland, which retains free trade with the EU, they still get free trade with it because, of course, they're going to trade for, with it. you got all the fish. It shows that we can have the benefits of European exports without the cost of their diktats. It's surely time that we too said goodbye to Brussels, so ain't it true, eh? But it won't happen for the rest of the countries, because they're all run so well by the guys that have been placed in there, by the guys who run the world. And that's why the public don't elect these characters. What you, what you get to do in this so-called democracy is, is the same as Russia had under the Soviet Union. They give you Politburo member one, two, three, or four. Which one do you want to vote for? It's the same thing. Carr quickly said that too. Every prime minister and every president from the late 1800s has been a member of this institution that he was a a member of himself. It was picked by them. We now call it the Council on Foreign Relations. So there you are. But yeah, I can remember in Canada when they brought in all the, the, the loud and all the big deep trawlers, these massive boats that really scoured, they took everything off, including all the eggs off the bottom. And uh, and at the same time, the Canadian fishermen were not allowed to go out and fish by their own government. It's a plan, you see. You can't have an independent country. You know, at the end of World War II, even the UN, because of Canada's this different kind of banking system at the time, uh, the, the UN said Canada was the most likely post-war country to to spring into first at the top of the world status for manufacturing and so on, because it had so little debt. So little debt. Then Trudeau was put in, of course, who was actually a communist, and every media member knew he was a communist, but never mentioned it. And he actually led the common turn young communists of Canada over to Moscow in 1952. And that's disclosed now, information, official information. And when he left, Canada was as rolled up in debt as every other country. Changed everything, immigration policies, the whole law upside down. To be the same as the rest of the world, interdependent. Meaning we owe our socks and our shirts to the 
to the World Bank. Folk don't even know what's happening. Mind you, as I say, you're taught to have fun, 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 and they give you so much cheap fun to keep you amused and happy. Interesting what Bertrand Russell said too. He says, he said that um, the public will believe they're happy even though they're living in misery because the government tells them so. So they keep, they keep telling you you're happy and sure, sure you will be happy. Quite something. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet.